buy a late model Sylvia Spec R, put a Bluetooth head unit in it and dust the sand out of your vagina. So recently I did a video and I was asking about, I guess, recommendations on what type of car I could buy. I had some... Um, daily driver. Daily driver, exactly. Not a, not a, not really a week, well not a weekend, an A, an a to B car essentially, but I had some stipulations about, I guess, some criteria they wanted to be met. And um, we had some pretty good recommendations and we also had As some... usual, no, no one read those uh, criteria, <laughs> just start posting any random car. But I, it was basically, it was 200 plus horsepower, so in kilowatts it's 150, but... Uh, that, that's a, that's at a minimum. Um, less than 10 years old, less than 100,000 kilometres. So I wanted something that, you know, wasn't, not getting long in the tooth, but, you know, needing needing a lot of maintenance. Just should still be a relatively fresh car. Manual. I wanted a manual. I don't actually mean, do you mean a stick shift. Stick shit. Something that can corner and something that can break better than your average A to B car. So, of course. So you didn't want a barrel. So what was the first? Uh, so speaking of wet sponges, what was uh, one recommendation? I should get a, uh, there's a few requests to buy this Aussie Classic. Well, the car gives you more standard features. Get into Australia's most powerful standard six. No, 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 Barras. No, um... Oh, no, another, sti another stipulation you wanted. You wanted boost. Oh, yes. Yeah, it had to be turbocharged. Well, there were a couple of cars that some people recommended that I didn't really think of. Yeah, there was a heap of cars that were recommended that pretty much were the exact opposite of the criteria I specified. So, uh, people saying put LSs in uh, RX-8. It's pretty funny, but I don't think that would exactly... Um, work out to be a great daily driver, I think that might just be a money pit from hell. Buy a late model Sylvia Spec R, put a Bluetooth head unit in it, and dust the sand out of your vagina. It's um, good advice there, but uh, no. Here's another one. Tiny bit down on power, but a C12 Nissan Pulsar Triple S, it's a turbo 1.6, is under 20k and fits the checklist. Well, actually it doesn't fit the checklist because it doesn't even have 200 horsepower. I remember when these cars came out, they sucked then and they suck even more now. Basically, that car, it, it would have a look, even the torque, 240 newton meters out of a turbo four is rubbish. I got one once when we were in Sydney as a high car. We did too, yes. Because it says Digi on the back or something, or it has some weird badge on it. This is a type of car mm, it was that was slow. It was rubbish. This was a type of car that would suit an Uber driver. There's nothing. Mm. It, was, it wasn't very a nice looking car either. Like it yeah, looked dated. It's as. ugly as. It's yeah. dated. It, the interior was bland. It's just a a serious A to B car that happens to have a turbocharged engine that probably runs like six pounds of boost. That's about. Yeah. Anyway, that one was cut. <clears throat> what about a barrel? Nah. There's no. I looked. I looked on on uh, car sales again and actually found a couple that met your criteria. Manuals. And all your criteria, like they were, they were like say 90, 80, 80 to ninety thousand k's. To be honest, if I was buying, not that I want a Barra Falcon, like the size of that car. If I actually, I, I actually think I would have, if I, if I was actually in that market, that type of car, I'd get an auto. Yeah, I think a manual on one of those is just. It's not like you're driving some nice, sweetly matched setup. You're driving this big, long throw clutch Commodore. First, second, and uh, third. Um, but cars worth considering, obviously. A lot of people were pushing a Focus ST or even a Fiesta ST, I think they're called. Now, the Fiesta, I've got an idea, they're pretty small. They look terrible, I reckon. Oh, this is personal. They, get, like they the get good reviews. They're very small car, though. Just, very the small. headlights are, like, really long. I don't know. The style. The on headlight them. is, I'm not joking, it is actually bigger. It's longer than the width of the wheel. It's that big. The Focus is a much nicer looking car. Oh, way better. The yeah. Fiesta, the... Light is basically the entire front panel. It just looks... We just say the looks of that car are quite interesting, and you know, I don't really like that. Fiesta. Sounds like a porn movie. No. A few mentioned the Alfa Giulietta. I didn't actually drive this car. I did look, I did consider it, but I, I don't know. I'm just still put off by the whole Italian thing. I don't know. Something about build quality and placing timing belts at God knows what low, low Ks. Every service. I don't know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not totally like that's a bad car or anything. I, it's just one I didn't really put up there on the list. A few, also, a few are pointing to a Megane RS. In the video, I stated that they didn't have an LSD. I was incorrect with that. I think I just assumed because yours didn't, they all didn't, and I probably read some stuff, but anyway. Point noted. WRX and MPS Mazda also got, you know, mentioned a lot. The WRX, even though it's a dumb comparison, but even though I have an old Lancer all-wheel drive, um... It's obviously much older, 
but I kind of just didn't want to have another car that was that kind of rally style car. I don't know if that sounds dumb, but it's I just... not a rally. And a newer WRX is hardly a rally car. They're just <clears> I know, Camry. I know, but <laughs> Camry. I don't know. There's something about. I don't know. I wouldn't buy one either. There's also some comments telling me to keep the uh, Mondeo. Yeah, it's better than all of the cars you recommended. Yeah, why are you selling it? This thing's unreal. Well, it's got 200,000 Ks on it, and, and I've had it for five years, and I'm going to move on. And I, that's not really an option. Plus, they're saying you do a few mods to it. There's no point in a big car that. You're going to make some power. I reckon in that car, too, you probably would have just hurt the clutch. Yeah, for sure. The clutch in it was a bit old, and who you know, I, I, that's, that's partly why I never modified it. But anyway, that's not what the video was about. It was about finding a new car. So I guess I narrowed it down to a bunch of cars that I went and test drove. I'll say first that one car I didn't drive, which I probably should have, and a few people have recommended was that Opal OPC thing, that Astro Opal, whatever it was yeah, called. Yeah, why didn't you drive it? I don't know, I just didn't. A lot of them were kind of pushing up near the 20k. Not that I could have got one. I probably could have got one for under. That wasn't the issue. I don't know. There was just something about it being an Opal, which is dumb. Prejudice. It's... In... Actually, there's a reason why, really, because I did drive one car and I was sold on it. I think I was just, this is cool, and I bought it. You bought a car? I did buy a car, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. I um, I test drove a Golf GDI. Now, that was a good car. Quality car, well made. There's just something about it, I don't know, I just... It was actually, it was a, it was a really good car. I, I got nothing against Golfs in the terms of... They do everything well, I just... Boring. I don't know if it's boring, I don't think that's the right term, but... Um, I don't know. I guess they're a very common thing. I actually, it was actually they funny. Thought, out, there are a lot of them on the road. If I bought a Golf, it's like, is this going to be the end of Bench Talk? Because basically, that's what. I've given a lot of shit to Golfs in Bench Talk over the years, but that would probably just make it funnier. But anyway. So, um, what model what model Barra did you get? No Barra. Um, Focus ST. That's a very good car. You bought a Focus ST? No. That's a. I look. Another one I just drove was a Focus ST. It's a very good car. Oh. Four doors. Good engine. It's actually got a lot of connectivity in it, like like the pretty modern with its not just Bluetooth, but everything else in the car. Or the it's funny. It's not a bad looking car. I actually really dislike the ass end of those cars. Though. It looked like the tail lights melted like a candle and just sit in a funny position. I think the I reckon I don't mind the Focus, and I, but I reckon some of them look better depending on the color. You know, they sell like this weird tangerine, yeah, yellow orange color. But I'm, I'm just um, I'm basically nitpicking because I have to justify why I didn't buy that car because it actually it actually does tick a lot of boxes. I thought they were all right, all right cars. The one car I test drove that I found was fun. I just I love the car when I test drove it. It was just very fun, very raw, and I just thought this car is cool. And that's yeah, uh, Barra Ford U. You could have you could get could have got a U. No, they actually cost more I think than the sedans. I bought too. a Magan RS two six five. Christ, you're gonna cop it now. So basically, we've uh, you bought another Renault. Yeah, we've got two Renaults here. But why? You just trying to get this channel shut down or what? So two French cars. On the channel. So is this parked outside? It's outside. You gotta look at it now. Very, very good car. Yeah. On the Magan, the Magans you were talking about last time, they've only got two doors. It's a two door car. Practical two door car. Practical two door car. We're well, gonna get sick of that real quick. Yeah, I've, I've yeah, it is, it is interesting. I, I've, a few times I've gone to actually reach for the do door and gone, um, there's no door here. Uh, okay. I open up the door. Open up the door that's about two meters long. How long, how long have you had it for? I've only had it for a week. Let's go have a look at it. You know what? I actually don't believe you bought my gun. I'm going to go out there and check it out. So this is a 2 litre, it's uh, obviously turbocharged. It's the same engine, I think, in gearbox out of the previous model, so like a Renault 225. 
obviously, I don't, I don't know if the turbo is a bit bigger or something, but it's obviously making more power. They tune them up as the models go. This model, I think, also came out in a 275, slightly revised. Intercools are quite wide, but, you know, plastic end tanks quite thin, but, you know, they do the job for this kind of power output. So, see the red seat belts? They don't look as poxy as my silver ones. Why don't they just put black seat belts in a car? I don't know, it's a bit of a wanky thing, isn't it? I mean, at least it's not. Some of them have bright yellow. Red's better, but it's got a pretty nice interior. The seats are pretty comfortable. There is an option to get these really full-on Recaro seats. I think they're a bit like what's in the Focus RS at the moment. But saying that, I think these would be more comfortable on a long drive, to be honest. The, the racy seats look cool and everything, but in reality, a lot of people say you sit in them for an hour and you want to get out of it. So. Yeah. This model didn't have them, but it wasn't specifically... They're fine for a weekend car, but a daily car, Recaro's... My, other, my other car has got Recaro's. I know they're the older older style, but they're so narrow. Um, they're, these are really good seats, actually. Good steering wheel position and everything. It's You can pull it in and out and up and everything. Um, pretty good seating position in this car. Uh, it's a real driver's car, actually. Uh, so 265 means it's got... 265 horsepower, which is, what, 195 kilowatt? It's not so much... As, it's more like these modern direct injection engines to the turbo ones. They're so, they're such a good power band. Like this makes 80% of its torque at like un, under 2000 RPM, which is pretty common. It's not like unique to this yeah. car. It's pretty common in modern cars. You don't think that much of it until you jump, you know, go and jump in an old WRX or something. They're just shit out. It's rubbish. Some of the cool features are actually, it's funny when I test drive this car, I just, I just drive it in what you call normal mode. It's got this sport mode. You touch the button. And it says like sport mode engage and you go well, what wanky shit is that it's actually completely chalk and cheese driving the car with it we'll run through in a second i'll show on the dash but you can actually modify how your throttle position works which sounds you go why and you go it's actually once you start playing around with it it's actually really cool so this has got the same crazy uh like credit your card key as mine i know and you have to have it in it's obviously the remote but you have to put it in the car to start the car Typical weird French ergonomics. I mean, look at this. This is you don't turn the air conditioning off. You apparently sorry, you don't turn the air conditioning on. You turn it off. AC off. With this sport mode, you turn it on. It actually increases the idle. I'm assuming that's just to make it easy to drive off the line with the clutch. Remember the old days with the Nintendo, the left, right, left, right, up, left. You you hold these two buttons in, and it comes up. And we're gonna go into full on hoon mode here. And it comes up and you'll see here. Well, so this is exactly the same as an R35 GDR. Yeah, not quite. So at the moment, obviously it's it's pretty cool. You can see, okay, what's the oil temperature? What's the intake temperature? Uh, we've got a lap timer. If we go to a track, you can cut laps, apparently. It's pretty cool. It's actually got performance timers in here. I haven't used this yet, but if you wanna actually do some performance times, that's pretty cool. I wanna, I'd, You'd have to assume it's pretty accurate. I don't know much. I haven't looked it up. I don't know much about it. Um, G meters. Okay, we're going to do cornering Gs, are we? Now, this is what I was talking about. This, this torque management, this is a relationship between your accelerator pedal and the drive-by wire. So we can flick through these. At the moment, this is in sport. You can put it in extreme. You can see how the throttle map has changed here. I originally drove this in extreme, and it's actually a little bit too sensitive for day-to-day -day driving because you, you just breathe on the throttle, and it almost... It's jerky. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Again, I'll put it in the, the most craziest mode, but he actually got jerky. I've actually, I actually run it in sport mode. Now you'll see the throttle map. I'll run through these. You can, you can actually, you can actually make it. You can see how that's linear. You can see in extreme, it's very instantaneous. The throttle map. Yeah. You can keep going through these. You got obviously a full on linear one there. Now progressive. You can put it in snow, which means. You're going to have to actually floor the car to give any kind of throttle, which is obviously what you want if the roads are extremely slippery. So it's not just for thrash driving, you know. Driving yeah, this is a, this is one of the positives of having drive by wire. Yeah, and I think you recorded a video recently about an expert in the field, and you see the relationship between and how just how the advantage you have with drive by wire in, a, in an engine. That for a standard car, the suspension is very hard. Um, yeah, you feel every bump on the road. I used to laugh when journos say, oh, this car's rough and I'd have an older car modified. What are they talking about? It's a modern car, but even you jumped, when you got in it, you said it's a pretty hard car, but um, like I said, 
they set these cars up for drivers who want a car that obviously handles well. It, more modern cars and more expensive cars have like adjustable suspension systems, you know, sport, um, hard, and the and the, the shockers will change. This is just hard all the time. So, but you know, so far I've, I've had it for only a week or so and it's, I really like it and hopefully I like it enough where I'll keep it for a while. But I guess let us know what you think of this car. Some people will love this car. Some people will hate it. I think cars like this, so you have to take them for a test drive to understand what they like to drive. And that's my dash cam talking. <laughs>